Urban riding can be a really great way of saving money, beating traffic, as well as keeping fit. But it does put your bike to the test, constantly starting and stopping, not to mention the conditions of many of our roads. Let's take a look then at which basic maintenance checks we should be doing with our urban bikes. Inspect your brake pads, as they can wear down at a pretty quick rate in the winter, especially when you've got rain to help speed that process up. Now, if they've only got a couple of millimetres or so of rubber left, I'd put new ones on straight away, likewise if they are worn unevenly. Also, check and see why they are uneven. Are your brake blocks out of line and not braking on the rim track properly? Maybe even more dangerous is that they are close to the tyre sidewall. I mean, you could easily go through the sidewall of the tyre if that is the case. Disc brake users, you're in the same situation here regarding pad wear. If they're worn down to a millimetre of pad material, make sure you get them replaced. And to clean the disc brake pads and rotors of their dust, then you can actually get cleaners inside an aerosol that cleans and blasts the dirt away really effectively. What about the braking performance then? Well, if you're having to pull the lever more than halfway to the handlebar before the pads make contact with either the rim or the rotor, maybe they need adjusting. However, that is also a little bit of personal preference there too. But in the case of rim brakes, you could easily undo the brake cable clamp, pull the cable through and just re-tighten it. Hydraulic disc brakes, you're gonna need to have the system bled though, which maybe you'll have to visit your local shop to help you out with. A clean bike is going to be way less likely to let you down on your ride. I know many urban commuters who don't have the facility to be able to clean their bikes, so there is a cheeky little hack that you can take advantage of. In fact, it's something I used to do when I lived in London and didn't have anywhere to wash my own bikes. Head on down to your local petrol station or car wash and use their jet wash. Generally though, they do have a stronger amount of pressure than a home model, but if you take care with it, I reckon it's nice and safe to use. Just be careful and don't blast it into your bearings and also be careful around any loose paintwork too. But for cleaning up rims and brake blocks, they are great and can really shift brake dust. If you're using disc brakes, you need to be careful though because you don't want to risk getting through the seals as you could put water into the system, which is never good news. It can also be used to blast muck from your chain, which is always a nice thing to do, let's face it. Just don't spray it too close to the cassette as you could get into the hub bearings and that's a whole heap of trouble. Alternatively, how about a chain cleaning device that simply attaches onto the chain, you fill it with degreaser, turn the pedal so that the chain passes through it and the grime just dislodges and in some models, fragments of metal that are actually within the chain, they are attracted to a little magnet, basically cleaning up your drivetrain even more. Also, don't forget to clean your cassette and chain rings, and this can easily be done with an old t-shirt or pipe cleaners. Nice and simple job, that. Of course, if you've got yourself a Gates carbon belt drive, like on this bike, you don't even need to worry about that because it's, well, virtually maintenance free. No oil for any dirt to get stuck to. Tires. They're a product under constant abuse when commuting. Ensure that they are at a suitable pressure, as this will make your cycling more efficient, less likely to have punctures, and also safer when cornering. The pressure though, it does depend on your tyre size, but a local bike shop will most certainly be able to advise you better than me, because, well, I can't see you through this lens. But what about the condition of your tyres? Because in cities, there are often patches of oil and diesel, not to mention manhole covers, which can be a slippery situation under your tyres. Make sure that the tyres are not thread or tread bare. Uh, some tyres actually have a handy wear indicator to help with this too. Also, check that the tyres are round and they're not flat at the top. It does sound silly, but some tyres can effectively go square at the top of the tyre, which gives you really poor handling. What about punctures then? The dreaded flat tyre. Decent tyres, they are certainly going to help. Something designed for urban use, as will puncture-proof liners that go inside of the tyre and fit between the tyre and the inner tube. They can also help prevent punctures. I can vouch that standing roadside in the winter fixing a puncture is not fun one bit. Uh, another product that can help is sealant that you squeeze into your inner tubes through the valve. It's not a get out of jail free solution. You should always have a spare inner tube, levers and pump. The sealant though is just another great product that can automatically help seal a puncture hole as you ride because the liquid rushes to the air hole and it's kind of like magic happening. But like I say, it doesn't always work with all sizes of holes, but it's certainly something that's helped me in the past. 
Now, sadly, and more annoyingly, I've been let down in the past by some battery operated lights. When I say battery operated, I mean the ones that you can change in and out of the actual unit itself. Because while well, these batteries, they seem to have a tendency to run out when you need them most, or worse still, they can sometimes break as the seals aren't as tight as these lights are designed to be opened and closed. Personally, a great way to get around this is to get yourself some USB rechargeable lights. Virtually every workplace these days has somewhere you can plug in a USB cable should you find yourself running low on the way to work. And at home, well, I reckon you will have a USB plug too. It's just remembering to charge them up, isn't it? Uh, it's better for the environment too, instead of using those often disposable batteries. Even better, what about this? A dynamo hub. That way it lights your path up via pedal power. Admittedly, it may cost a fair bit of cash to get started with it, but, well, you're never going to be scrabbling around for batteries, are you? Oh, and one more thing. Always check your wheels are fully tightened, especially if you leave your bike in a public area. There are some unscrupulous people out there who may well try and take parts of your pride and joy, so just make sure they're nice and tight. That way, well, they're not going to fall out if you try and ride off. Right, I do hope you've enjoyed these little bits of... Well, I think they're nuggets of tips for winter commuters. Let me know though, if you've got any tips for fellow commuters down there in the comment section below. Also, how about giving it a like, a share, a big old thumbs up too. And don't forget too, to check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. We've got a whole heap of goodies for you to check out. And now for another great video, this one on how to winterize your bike, how about clicking just down here? I like that. I liked that. <laughs>